Honourable Member for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Social Services and Other Legislation Amendment Workforce Incentive Bill of 2022. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, at the outset I'd like to say that uh, uh, on the face of it, the government supports this bill uh, with a second reading amendment calling on the government to increase the work bonus to $600 a fortnight from 1 July 2023. This is yet again a bill where uh, essentially the government is uh, copying um, some good ideas from the coalition, um, both when we were in government and also uh, whilst we are in opposition. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to um, uh, talk a little bit about the good people of Fisher. Now, uh, Fisher is uh, still regarded as a rural seat. and Some people might find that a little bit hard to believe with the great places of Mooloolaba, uh, Kiwana. Um, <laughs> I know the member for Braddon is having a bit of a chuckle, but we have significant farming uh, and agricultural pursuits in the good seat of Fisher. Well, we, we have uh, a great deal of strawberry farmers, pineapple farmers, macadamia nut farmers. Uh, we have cattle farmers like the good member for Braddon sitting here at the, at the box. Um, he's not the only cattle farmer in the country, although he, he'd, he'd pretend as though he is. You might say he's the best, but uh, clearly the good people of Fisher are—we we, we are a very, very good uh, growing agricultural community, and I'm very proud to represent them. But what a, a lot of my, uh, my farming constituents are telling me uh, and, and in fact, a lot of my business constituents, business peoples, are telling me, is that they just cannot get staff. We're seeing cafes uh, closing. We're seeing cafes uh, only open for certain hours of the day. Um, we're seeing many businesses who are um, the, the business owners are absolutely being pushed to the point of of exhaustion because they are having to work uh, longer and longer hours because they just simply can't get staff. Uh, we're seeing the destruction of crops uh, because they can't be picked. Um, these are very, very real issues. And when you look at the, um, the, the, the number one burning issue that's troubling Australians at the moment, and that of course is cost of living, Australians are really feeling the, the pinch right now, and when uh, we find a situation where uh, employers can't get the workers that they need to to be able to run their businesses, um, you know we're heading down dangerous times in this country, and it is just so incredibly important that, as a parliament, that we look at all avenues to try and free up that that um, labour marketplace to get as many people as we possibly can um, into, into employment. Now, for those uh, who might be listening to this, um, thank you. Um, for those who might be listening to this, who are at an age where they've retired, um, they may not want to work, and, and that's fine. But equally, when people who are, uh, are on the aged pension or, or veterans' pensions who are uh, certainly on fixed incomes. And with the rising cost of living, many of them are having trouble making ends meet. And that you know, is axiomatic. If you're on a, a fixed income and your cost of living, we know from the budget just last week that our, our, our uh, energy prices, our electricity prices are set to increase by 56 per cent over the next two years. Our gas prices, and these are figures based on, on, uh, on the government's own numbers, gas prices are tipped to increase by 44 per cent over the next two years. Petrol and diesel, well, diesel is just absolutely um, uh, out of this world at the moment. I think you know, uh, petrol is around on the Sunshine Coast around $1.75 a litre. Diesel, for some unbelievably unknown reason, is somewhere around $2.35, $2.40 a litre. Now, if you're 
a uh, retired person who might enjoy going up to Fraser Island on occasion, as many people do in Fisher, um, then you, know, you, you probably own a, a four-wheel drive, a diesel four-wheel drive. You're paying $2.35 a litre to put diesel into it. Um, these cost of living pressures are set to increase and increase significantly. So, as I said, we need to do everything we can in this place uh, as, a, as an opposition to work collaboratively with the government to try and ease the cost of living on Australian families. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I recently did uh, my tour to Fisher, where I, I ride my push bike around the electorate in Lycra, I might add, uh, for my state colleagues. Uh, and I have to say that um, nearly almost every person I met, I do it over a week, member for Dobell, uh, um, and I, I talked to over 130 constituents, and almost all of them talked to me about the rising cost of living. And when I was interviewed uh, by a local radio station uh, a couple of days later, they said, "You know, what's the what's the burning issue uh, on the Sunshine Coast?" And I said, "This: the burning issue is cost of living, cost of living, cost of living. Everybody, and I mean everybody, is feeling the pinch at the moment. So, when you've got people who are feeling the pinch, which is just about everybody." and you've got businesses that can't get staff, it stands to reason that we do what we can to try and get as many uh, pensioners, aged pensioners or veterans uh, who are on a pension, to be able to get them back to work if that is what they would like to do. And certainly many of them are saying that that is exactly what they want to do. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the bill amends the Social Security Law and Veterans Entitlement Act of 1986 to encourage age pension, disability support pension, carer payment and veterans entitlement recipients over age pension age to engage in paid employment. This includes suspending the benefits and entitlements instead of immediate cancellation, allowing for a more streamlined step up or step down from the incentives. It means extending the qualification for pensioner concession cards and temporarily increasing the pensioner work bonus. Now, once again, this policy reflects measures proposed by the coalition in government. On 10 February 2022, the coalition, when it was in government, I remember those glory days, introduced the Social Service Legislation Amendment Workforce Incentive Bill of 2022 to incentivise recipients of the age pension, disability support pension and certain veterans entitlements to undertake or increase paid employment. Under the coalition's legislation, pensioners with employment income whose total income exceeded the income limit would have their age pension suspended for a period of up to two years rather than cancelled after 12 weeks. If at any time during the two-year period their income was at a level that they could return to the age pension, they would benefit from, bless you, from an abridged reapplication process that only required them to update their circumstances, including their income and asset information with Services Australia. The Coalition's bill also allowed for working age pensioners, disability support pensioners and certain veterans entitlement recipients and their pensioner partners to retain their pensioner concession card for up to two years after their payment ceases. After the election, the Coalition announced a Dutton government would support older Australians who choose to work more by doubling the amount of income age pensioners and veteran service pensioners can earn without reducing pension payments. This would enable pensioners and relevant veteran entitlement recipients to earn up to $600 a fortnight work bonus and still receive the maximum amount of pension payment. This would benefit 80,000 age pensioners and up to 22,000 residents of Fisher. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, in my electorate, it's one of the largest, in fact, is the largest demographic, uh, and you know, up to 22,000 residents in Fisher would benefit from this. Pensioners would continue to accrue unused pension work bonus amounts up to a maximum of $7,800, which can exempt future earnings from the pension income test. The increase would be reviewed annually. This coalition policy makes it further worthwhile for older Australians 
to pick up an extra shift or work extra hours and help small and regional businesses deal with labour shortages. Back then, the coalition called on the Albanese government to implement the policy immediately to help relieve pressure on a very tight labour market. And all we got from the government was silence. It took the Jobs and Skills Summit to drag the Albanese government belatedly into this policy space. While welcoming the government's long overdue announcement of an increase in the work bonus income bank balance, we said it was too little, too late. On 3rd of August, Senator Dean Smith introduced a private senator's bill to give effect to the policy announced by the coalition. The bill also included extended qualification for pensioner concession cards and suspension of benefits and entitlements instead of cancellation, as per the bill introduced by the former government on 10 February. Additionally, in September, the coalition successfully amended other government social services legislation in the Senate to include the measures contained in Senator Smith's bill. This legislation is yet to return to the House of Representatives. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, the first two schedules in this government bill replicate the measures in the coalition's bill introduced in February and in Senator Smith's bill. We take issue with the lesser financial incentive, though. The government's alternative is a financial incentive less than the increase the coalition's policy would provide, and it's only a temporary measure due to expire on the 30th of June 2023. So not only is it less half, in fact, of what uh, the coalition put forward only uh, a couple of months ago, but it is a temporary measure. That's why the coalition is calling on the government to increase the work bonus from $300 to $600 a fortnight to incentivise eligible pensioners. Increasing the amount pensioners can earn every fortnight will make a meaningful difference to household finances, and the coalition calls on the government to increase the fortnightly work bonus from $300 to $600 from 1 July and provide certainty by actually making it ongoing. By all means, have a review, uh, as is often the case in this place. Um, write it into the legislation that after 12 or 24 months of the operation of the Act, a review could be undertaken to determine whether it's still necessary, whether it's still uh, of utilitarian value. Um, but uh, uh, we would suggest at this stage that this is something that we should be looking at continuing. Now, this bill, whilst we will support it with amendments, it demonstrates two things. It demonstrates that, Labor, that, that this Labor government does not have a real plan to address the cost of living pressures faced by Australian families and their businesses. And I talked a, a lot about that at the commencement of my speech. Secondly, that even in opposition, the coalition is delivering for our most vulnerable, including our veteran community. It was the case with veterans' affairs reforms. It was the case with downsizing incentives, with PBS co-payments. When it comes to health care, social care, employment support and veterans care, it has always been the coalition with a plan to support Australians in need. Meanwhile, Labor cut services in the regions. Uh, we saw that in the budget just uh, a couple of weeks ago. They slashed progress made in first responder and veterans mental health support. And boy, can I wait. I can't wait to get 15 minutes uh, in the appropriations bill to talk about those two issues. Um, this is a government who are all talk and smoke and mirrors. We'll continue to hold them to account, backing good policy, which is usually our policy that they're copying, but we will fight them tooth and nail to ensure that Australian families and their businesses get the best out of this parliament because they deserve nothing less.